very welcome from my side. Uh, and thank you very much for the introduction. And today I will actually cover the reliable analysis of antigen specific T cells from human blood mostly. So, but before we start, please recognize the display disclaimer. So let's start with a brief definition of the um, antigen specific T cells, which are the focus of today. So of course, in general, all T cells are antigen specific. However, here we actually talk about T cells that were activated by a specific antigen, for example, a viral or also a tumor associated um, peptide, for example. And this is in stark contrast to the polyclonal activation achieved via anti-CD3, anti-CD28 stimulation, for example. So here on the picture, you can see an antigen presenting cell in green that takes up um, an extracellular antigen and then presents the antigen via MHC2, MHC class one, to an antigen specific T cell. So this could be CD4 positive T cells, CD8 positive T cells, also regulatory T cells. Presenting the antigen, the T cells will get activated. For example, they will upregulate certain activation markers like, for example, CD25, CD69, or others, um, start to secrete um, different types of effector cytokines, and will also start to proliferate, so to clonally expand. So during this, this uh, activation here, um, only T cells that actually possess, possess a specific T cell receptor to recognize the specific antigen that is presented on the antigen presenting cell will get activated. So by definition, these antigen specific T cells are very rare cells. And what is also good to know is that these antigen specific T cells are actually crucial for the formation of immunological memory, for example, after vaccination, and also for the maintenance um, of tolerance to self antigens, for example. So given this, the, the, these T cells are actually um, highly important in both basic and clinical research, for example, in tumor immunology, diagnostics, but also, for example, in vaccine um, development, also during um, um, infectious diseases like we saw with COVID-19. So what is the role of antigen-specific T cells in, um, in cancer, actually? So here you see a schematic that you may have seen in other sessions of the team e webinar series of the tumor microenvironment. And as you can see, the tumor microenvironment or TME actually harbors a complex composition of different cell types. For example, you have, of course, the cancer cells, cancer stem cells, but also, for example, tumor associated fibroblasts, of course, endothelial cells lining the blood vessels. And of course, most importantly for the day, the so called tumor infiltrating leukocytes. So these are also known as TILs. And of course, T cells are actually part of this tumor infiltrating leukocytes. So here you can actually see a schematic overview of the so-called um, cancer immunity cycle. So actually in the best case, the genetic and also the, the cellular alterations of the, of the TME will actually provide um, our immune system with the means to generate um, T cells and T cell responses that will recognize and also in the best case eradicate cancer cells. So actually in this cancer immunity cycle, um, in the first step, neoantigens created by um, onco oncogenesis are actually released and captured by dendritic cells. Um, and then in the second step, these dendritic cells will then present these captured antigens on MHC1 or MHC2 to T cells. And this will then result in the priming and activation of different subsets of T effector cells. So this could be of, um, of course, CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells, but also um, CD4 positive regulatory T cells, for example. So at this stage here, it's actually important um, to realize that the nature of the immune response, so either CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells are induced or more regulatory T cells are induced, will determine the final outcome of this cancer immunity cycle in cancer patients. So finally, the activated effector T cells will then traffic and also infiltrate into the tumor bed, where they will hopefully recognize um, and bind to, to the specific cancer cells and also hopefully kill these cancer cells then in, in the last step. And actually this killing of cancer cells will then release more tumor associated antigens and then the cycle can actually start again. And thereby also hopefully the immune responses will increased, will be increased over time. But as you might, may know, this cancer immunity cycle is not active in most cancer patients. So this is actually where immunotherapy comes into place. So as mentioned before, analyzing these circulating antigen-specific T cells from blood, for example, will be the focus of today's webinar. 
But how can we actually analyze these circulating antigen specific T cells? Well, there's actually two main methods. So first we have the so-called direct analysis of T cell specificity via, for example, peptide MHC multimeres, which are basically just peptide loaded MHC1 or MHC2 molecules that function like normal antibody to detect the T cell receptor on antigen specific T cells. And they can, they're always coupled to a fluorophore and then you can um, analyze them using flow cytometry. And actually these peptide MHC multimers provide the highest specificity to identify antigen specific T cells. They work very well for CD8 positive T cells, but only limited of course for CD4 positive T cells due to the nature of MHC class two. They do not provide any information on the functional capacity of the cells, also the, the subset that's analyzed. And they are, um, for, uh, until now, they're still limited to a defined number of peptides and also MHC molecules. In addition, we also have the so-called indirect analysis methods, where we more focus on effective functions, like for example, cytokine secretion or the upregulation of, of certain surface markers. And in this indirect analysis methods, you would always perform a co-culture of an antigen presenting cell, for example, an dendritic cell that presents an antigen to a T cell, to a, to a T cell that will get activated, and then you analyze the different effective functions. So the cool thing um, with this method is actually that it works for all T cell subsets, including all the regulatory T cells. You will get T cell subset specific information, and it is mostly also independent of the used antigen for stimulation or the investigated donor. So what kind of markers can we actually analyze on antigen specific T cells? So for example, here we have CD69 as an early activation marker that's upregulated already three hours after stimulation, after co-culture with dendritic cells, and is expressed on almost all activated T cells. Then we have CD25, also known as the interleukin-2 receptor. It's a rather late activation marker that is expressed on almost all activated T cells, also including regulatory T cells. Then very important for today, we have CD154, also known as CD4D ligand. It's an idle activation marker for the analysis of activated conventional C4 positive T cells upregulated um, already after four hours of antigen specific stimulation. And then we have CD137, also known as 41BB. It's a suitable activation marker for CD8 positive T cells if you stimulate your cells for at least 16 hours. However, you have to be a bit careful with CD137 because it's also an early activation marker for regulatory T cells. And then, as already mentioned before, you have various effector cytokines that can be analyzed for functional subtyping of different subsets of antigen activated T cells. They can be analyzed in a supernatant or on a single cell level via, for example, intracellular cytokine staining um, or our cytokine secretion assays. And we will see those um, later. And of course, there are many more markers that can be analyzed. And you will actually find a lot of these markers in our Max handbook. So after the presentation today, we will also share the slides and every, every time you see this orange hand here, you will actually find clickable content. So you can just click on it and then you will be redirected to website. Take a closer look at the workflow that we have um, proposed for you for the analysis of antigen specific T cells. And I just um, I want to make sure that this is just an idea. So of course the workflow is also can be flexibly um, adapted to your individual needs. So we will always start with um, preparing the sample. So when we analyze antigen specific T cells, we will usually start from PBMCs or also directly from whole blood. And Maria will later in her session also focus on, on the tissue part. Following um, prep, um, preparation of, for example, PBMCs, you would then perform the cell stimulation. This could be performed either polyclonally or better antigen specifically using, for example, our peptivator peptide pools. And here, as I've already said before, it's really important that you have both T cells as well as antigen presenting cells in your, in your, um, in your culture. And this is of course very easy if you start with PBMCs. However, if you start with isolated T cells, for example, from, from PBMCs, whole blood, also from tissues, you would always need to spike in certain populations of antigen pre presenting cells. And then finally, um, you would just analyze um, the cells using uh, mostly uh, flow cytometry. And here we have different antibody panels and also our own max quant analyzers. There is also certain optional steps. So for example, after preparing a PBMCs, you can also think about isolating um, certain T cell subsets. And here we also provide various um, reagents for, for subset isolation. 
following cell stimulation right before cell, cell analysis, you could also think about a magnetic pre-enrichment of only the antigen reactive T cells that were activated to just increase resolution in flow cytometry. And then finally, after cell analysis, also before cell analysis, this kind of depends on your, on your workflow, you could also um, sort these antigen-specific cells, for example, if you want to expand them in, in culture. So, but now let's start with sample preparation. So here for sample preparation, we've actually developed a so-called Max Prep PBMC isolation kit for human PBMCs. And the PBMC kit is really nice because it allows you to isolate untouched PBMCs, so the cells will not be labeled for all your downstream assays in just 25 minutes, which is actually super fast. And it just has um, these three simple steps. So first you would actually get your, your blood product, label all non-PBMCs, then sediment all the erythrocytes by centrifugation, and then take the supernatant that contains both the PBMCs as well as the non-PBMCs, and just apply the supernatant on one of our magnetic columns, and then take the flow through um, as your PBMC population. And here you just have some, some flow plots um, of PBMCs that were isolated using the kit, and you can see a really nice population of CD45 positive, of CD14 um, positive monocytes, as well as CD3 positive T cells, and CD20 um, positive B cells. So what is really, really nice, so you will save a lot of time because you don't need to perform any red blood cell lysis, um, neither any density gradient centrifugation is required. You will actually get really um, reproducible PBMC isolations because you don't have these to these, um, user, user variations anymore. And what is also really nice is that the kit is optimized for very small blood samples, which can be very advantageous if you work in the clinic, for example. And if you just compare um, the performance of the Max Prep PBMC isolation kit with just uh, the, the um, standard method, method by density gradient centrifugation, you can actually see that the percentage of different PBMC subsets is comparable, if not even better, with the Max Prep kit. And of course, if you have to analyze, if you have to isolate, isolate cells from a lot of samples, you can also use the, the Multimax Cell 24 Separator Plus which allows you to isolate up to 24 samples in parallel. And of course, if you are interested in larger blood um, samples, if you need to isolate PBMCs from larger blood samples, or want to use a fully automated way, you can just uh, search on our website for the so-called whole blood PBMC kit. So then we continue with the optional T cell isolation. So in here, I want to give you a brief introduction in our, um, into our MAX technology which actually consists of three simple steps to isolate both viable and also very pure target cells. So actually the first step is the magnetic labeling where an antibody conjugated to a tiny super um, paramagnetic microbead binds to a certain receptor or protein on the cell surface. So and then in the, in the second step, the magnetic separation, the cells are actually passed through a magnetic column that is positioned within a magnet. And then the cells labeled with the microbeads are actually retained in the column, while everything else is actually flowing through in a very gentle way. And then this flow through um, here on the bottom is actually called a negative fraction, which, co which contains all the cells that didn't have the ligand um, um, on, the, on the surface. And then finally, in the third elution step, the elution of the labeled cells, the columns actually removed from the magnet and then actually all the magnetically labeled cells, so the positive fraction in this case, will be um, washed out. So in this elution step is also very gentle to the cell, so you don't need to worry about any um, cell damage that, is, that, that may be caused by, by the column. It will just separate the cells into a very nice um, negative and positive fraction with, of course, very high purity and high viability. So let's see um, what kind of different MAX technologies we actually have for the T cell isolation. So with MAX technology, you can actually isolate T cells really no matter the starting material. So for example, for PBMCs and other single cell suspensions, we have here the so-called microbeads and also the microbead kits, which we offer for all basic T cells, T cell subsets for different species, also including our new Realis technology for the positive separation. For the negative isolation, we have the so-called isolation kits, also here for all the main basic T cells and T cell subsets. And then if you want to isolate T cells directly from, um, for example, whole blood or also other blood products, you can use the straight from microbead kits, which we have at the moment for CD3, CD4, CD8 T cells, um, only for human samples at the moment, and also including our new Realis technology. 
And then also for an untouched isolation, if you if you if you want to skip the isolation via the column, you can also use the Max Express isolation kits. Now that you have either prepared your your PBMCs or isolated your T cells, you want to stimulate your cells. And for cell stimulation, for um, in vitro stimulation of antigen-specific T cells, we actually have developed the so-called peptivator peptide pools. So these peptide pools are 15 mer peptides with an 11 amino acid overlap. So this you can also see here on the picture. And by this strategy, we actually cover the complete sequence of the respective antigen that should be used for stimulation. And actually the peptide lengths were designed to cover both MHC1 and MHC2 epitopes. And this actually ensures that both the cytotoxic CD8 positive T cells and various subsets of CD4 positive T helper cells will be stimulated. The peptivator peptide pools are also chemically synthesized, so this ensures a very high lot-to-lot -lot consistency and also very high experimental re reproducibility. And this is in contrast to the um, often in vitro synthesized um, um, full-length proteins. And of course, we also cover a um, growing portfolio of virus, tumor, fungi, microbiota, and also some autoantigens. And what is also good to know is that the peptivator peptide pools are already available in both research, premium, and also our um, own max GMP grade for a rapid translation of initial findings into the clinic. So if you look at the peptivator peptide pools, we actually offer really hundreds of different antigen specificities. For example, we have different peptide pools for melanoma, for other tumor associated antigens, for autoimmune diseases and also for infectious diseases. And here you see a plot where we stimulated PBMCs with different peptide pools and then analyzed the percentage of interferon gamma positive cells either among the CD4 positive T cells or among the CD8 positive T cells in two different donors. And what you can see that, of course, there's a um, high donor variability, but almost all peptide pools induced a very nice um, response of interferon gamma po um, production in, the, in both CD4 as well as CD8 positive T cells. So, and what, what I also want to mention is that the peptide pools are also available in a 96 well high throughput format, which, where you can combine different antigens just on one assay plate which really increases your flexibility to, to test different antigens. And you can stimulate culture, stain, and also analyze the cells directly on the same um, plate. So following cell stimulation, then you could, could think about a magnetic pre-enrichment. But here I want to briefly give you an X course in, in the main analysis tool that is um, used to study antigen-specific T cells, and this is flow cytometry. And of course, also even, even these established methods like flow cytometry have still certain limits and challenges, especially because these antigen and virus specific T cells are just so rare. And this was already illustrated years ago in a very, very nice publication by Bacher and colleagues, where the authors found that despite the high sensitivity of flow cytometry, it is always limited by the number of events that can be acquired as well as the standing background, of course, which is typically, typically between 0.0 one and 0.1% depending on the cell type you're looking at. So this really restricts the analysis of cell populations with a lower frequency. So if we look at the key challenges when it comes to antigen specific T cells, I've just said it, it's the low frequency. Of course, this depends on the T cell subset, the immune status of the donor and also the specificity. And here I've already introduced to our max microbeads for, for T cell isolation. And we also have uh, microbeads for pre-enrichment of antigen specific T cells. The other point that I also also mentioned is the high background staining and consequently the low resolution in flow analysis. And here we have our reaffinity recombinant antibodies that we will see later that are all coupled to our bio dyes for really bright staining with a low spillover. However, before flow, flow, flow analysis, I really um, believe that pre-enrichment here is the key for, um, for successful analysis. So it indeed results using, for example, our CD154 or CD137 microbead kit are really, really nice. So here, why CD154 is actually upregulated on activated um, CD4 positive T cells after four to 12 hours um, of expression, CD137 is upregulated on activated CD8 positive T cells. So in this example here, we used um, PBMCs, um, and then analyze either, either um, CD154 expression on CD4 positive T cells or CD137 on CD8 positive T cells before and after enrichment using the respective microbead kit. 
So we stimulated the PVMCs with a CMV PEP, um, PP65 peptivator, and then we already can see here that CD154 is upregulated only on the CD4 positive T cells, while CD137 is upregulated actually both on the CD8 positive T cells and also on CD8 negative T cells. So then we use the microbit kits to enrich the cells, and as you can see here, we got a really, really nice enrichment of only the antigen activated CD4 positive T cells as well as the CD8 positive T cells. And here we would need to do a consecutive um, isolation step to actually remove all the non CD8 positive T cells after that. So apart from um, the microbit kits, I also want to highlight a um, product that I really, really like, and these are the so called cytokine secretion assays. So in contrast to standard intracellular staining approaches, the cytokine secretion assays or CSA actually allow the viable enrichment of cytokine secreting, cytokine producing T-cells from both mouse and also human samples. And actually the principle is very simple. So you would again perform an antigen specific stimulation of, for example, your PBMCs. And during the simulation or before the simulation, you would actually label your cells with the so-called catch reagent and this catch reagent will immobilize the secreted cytokines on the, on the cell surface. So during the secretion period, you will then have the cell actually label itself with the produced cytokines. And then following stimulation, you will, call, uh, you will uh, use the so-called detection reagent, which is um, a fluorochrome coupled um, antibody that will detect the cytokine on the cell surface. And then you can just analyze the cells on a, um, um, a conventional flow cytometer. So for just the analysis of, of viable cytokine secreting cells, we have the so-called detection kits in PE, APC fits for, for different um, human as well as for various mouse cytokines. However, what is also very nice is that you can combine this detection also with an additional enrichment step. So you could um, think of labeling the fluorochrome then with an anti, for example, anti-PE microbead to allow a magnetic enrichment of the cytokine secreting cells. So consequently here, we also have the so-called enrichment anti-detection kits that are all based on PE, also for various human and mouse um, T-cell cytokines. And we have also brought you some, some data where our cytokine secretion assays were actually used to, in this case, enrich um, viable virus-specific T-cells. So here we use the TNF alpha um, secret, um, um, enrichment and detection kit for CD4 positive T cells, or in the firm gamma um, um, enrichment and detection kit for CD8 positive T cells. And we are again looking at PBMCs before and after enrichment. So then we stimulated the PBMCs either with a CMV lizard or in this case with a CMV PP65 peptivator again. And then we uh, use the enrichment and detection kit to enrich only the cytokine producing cells. So you see here this very tiny um, fraction of cytokine producing T's of cytokine producing um, CD4 positive T cells. So in this case, these are the TNF alpha producing cells that could be efficiently enriched using the, the respective kit. And in case of the CD8, you have this here, this very distinct population of interferon gamma producing CD8 positive T cells that could be also enriched very nicely. And what is also good to know is that you combine these cytokine secretion assays also in addition with the peptide MHC tetramer labeling, and you can find a very cool protocol on our website here. And you can also expand the cytokine secreting T cells following um, the enrichment. And here we also have developed a protocol that you will find on our website. So here I've summed um, up all the different enrichment strategies that we offer for the different antigen specific T cells. I will not go through the table um, right now, but as we are um, going to share the slides with you after the webinar, you can just also take a look then um, yourself. So and then finally, for the cell analysis step and also for the flow sorting. So for cell analysis, we actually have the so-called um, reaffinity antibodies and also our own um, proprietary bio dyes. So these reaffinity antibodies, I really have to say, they were designed keeping um, flow cytometry applications in mind. They are all recombinantly engineered, which actually means they have a reproducible performance in each and every experiment and also a higher lot to lot consistency compared to the standard hybridomers. And what is also is really nice is that they always have the same universal IgG1 isotype. This is really for if, you, if you're planning um, 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 complex panels, this will ensure a simple um, experimental design. 
So they all have the same isotype. And if you're still performing isotype control, it's really nice. You just need one isotype control for your entire panel. And then what we also did is we actually mutated the FC region of these reaffinity antibodies in a way that you don't need to block the FC receptors anymore. And this will then result in actually in a near zero background staining, which you can also see here with our CD116 antibodies coupled to PE. So you have the, the normal mouse monoclonal antibody. We have this, this background staining here compared to our RAR 211 clone, where this background staining is nearly um, completely gone. And of course, we have um, um, these reaffinity antibodies for all um, classical T cell markers, but also for the activation, proliferation, exhaustion T cell markers, as well as cytokines. And if you need um, help with, with designing your panel, you can always um, reach out to us. Apart from the reaffinity antibodies, we also have other really nice complete kits um, to facilitate um, your flow cytometry analysis. So, for example, we have the so called rapid cytokine inspector for human um, samples which allow a rapid multi-parameter analysis of um, both activated CD4s and also activated CD8 positive T cells. And here we have different cocktails for different um, T cell subsets. Then you can always choose your own cytokine antibody, for example, interferon gamma, TNF alpha, interleukin 2 or interleukin 17. And this, this entire protocol only takes 45, 40 to 45 minutes which is actually compared to the standard intracellular staining, which takes about two hours, is super fast. So this is really a one-step detection of both surface markers and intracellular cytokines. Then we also have the so-called Maxplex cytokine kits, both for human and for mouse samples. And I think if you are in, in multiplexed um, flow cytometry, you may have heard of them. So they also are multiplex analysis of soluble cytokines in just one sample. You can analyze up to 12 human or 10 mouse cytokines, and they are also just standard versions SA beads that can run on any um, conventional flow cytometer. And then we also have our famous eight color immunophenotyping kit for human samples, which actually is a flow based evaluation of different leukocyte subsets in just one single kit. So you can actually identify different subsets of, of monocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, TNB cells, and also NK cells. And all of these kits actually run on our MaxCoin analyzer, and you can automate um, the flow, the, the analysis using our um, so-called flow, flow express modes. And you can imagine these express modes as some kind of, of software module that is installed on our own flow instruments that really will help you to automate the analysis. And this will not only speed up the analysis, but also help you to standardize your essays for example, thanks to, to automated gating strategies. So then, of course, our flow portfolio is rounded off with our own um, flow analysis and also flow sorting instruments of the so-called MaxQuan series. So here on the left, you see the MaxQuan analyzer, which is really powerful um, benchtop flow cytometer with up to 16 optical parameters. And the clue here for me um, is really that it can be fully automated. So, um, it's not only the, the staining can be automated, but also the sample acquisition and the sample and the, um, the data analysis can be optimated thanks to the um, express modes. And then also it has a feature called smart gaining is that when you're running um, 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 experiments in different laboratories around the world, you can make sure that the same performance is achieved on each and every instrument. And due to its small size, it actually fits under every um, flow hood. And then we also have the so-called max quant cytosale sorter, which um, actually opposed to the classical droplet sorters that we all know, allows for a really um, gentle cell sorting thanks to this microchip based cell sorting strategy that is actually taking place in this um, cartridge here. So actually the entire sorting process is taking in this microchip here at the bottom. And then the sorting is actually separated into three um, different fractions. So you have the input fraction on the side, you have a positive um, um, chamber in the center, and also a negative um, fraction on the on the other side. And I think Maria will also go into the max quant title a bit more in detail. And of course, what is also is really nice to know is that the whole sorting process is completely sterile because there's there are no internal fluidics involved because it just happens in this closed um, closed cartridge. So which actually makes the Max Quantito the idle instrument for any GMP environment. So 
already brings me to my summary. So what should you remember for a successful analysis of antigen specific T cells? So we believe that actually the secret to success here of, of rare cell analysis is to avoid cell loss right from the beginning of your experiment. You use efficient stimulation reagents like the peptivator peptide pools. You pre-enrich your cells before, before flow analysis, and you make sure that you minimize the background staining. These are many secrets, but they are definitely true. So our solutions here that I introduced you to will help you with a fast and reproducible PBMC isolation in just 25 minutes. You can isolate T cells from virtually any starting material, be it um, PBMC, single cell suspensions, whole blood, um, both positive and negative um, separations are possible. You can uh, perform potent in vitro stimulation of different T-cell subsets. I introduced you to the CD154 and CD137 pre-enrichment microbeads for antigen-specific T-cells. You can reduce the background um, staining to a minimum using the, the reaffinity recombinant antibodies. You can perform a gentle cell sorting and also automated, completely automated flow cytometry with our MaxQuant um, instruments and um, also using our all-in-one um, different kits for flow cytometry, for example, for rapid surface marker or cytokine secretion analysis. And you will find all of those um, products and also much more data actually on our website for antigen-specific T cells, where you also see the entire workflow again. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention.